Before I uh, tear into the uh, oscillator coil, I wanted to mention something that I forgot in the last video. <clears throat> when I first fired this up, uh, I could. I, uh, it worked real well when the uh, variable capacitor was from about this section to about that section. I move a little bit further, and it's, I'd start to get some static pops in it. Move a little bit further, and it just went dead all the way down to where it was completely meshed. Well, after looking at it over a little bit and stuff and studying it, what I realized is uh, some of these um, plates had gotten slightly bent or misaligned, and when it got down into this section, um, a couple of the plates were uh, touching each other when they started to mesh. What I ended up doing is taking my fingernail and just uh, slightly adjusting these plates and this one out here ended up being the worst. There was a couple down here that uh, were also bent but that one back there. Once I got those uh, uh, bent and in, into the right place and everything now it uh, it uh, moves real smoothly and uh, it works all the way through the motion. So that's how we fix that. Yeah, as I mentioned, I need to pull that oscillator coil out and figure out how to properly get this coil that's wrapped around here put in correctly. Um, in a minute I'll show you a different S38 and show you how it looks. So that means I'm going to have to un unsolder all these, uh, these tabs, um, terminals, excuse me, remove those. And then, I don't know if I can get it to focus on it, but uh, there's a, uh, um, probably the biggest challenge is, is uh, there's a mounting screw down there, and they, they uh, kind of a leg, yeah, I can't get it to focus on that, but there's a mounting screw down there on a leg, and they've soldered that mounting screw in place, so I have to try to desolder, get that desoldered, and get the screw out so I can get the oscillator coil out. Um, so that will be the next big challenge here. Uh, I'll show you the uh, one and the other S38 I have here, and show you what the how it looks different. Okay, here's the one. If it'll focus here. Here's the one out of the S other S38, and you can see um, that it's it's wrapped completely around the tube. It comes out the side there, wraps around two times, and actually goes inside the uh, coil uh, on the bottom side. And so I think I have to try to figure out if I can do that. I don't know if I get into the bottom side, the, the, the solder lug's been broken there or, or what, but we'll have to check and see. I had a company contact me via email, saw my webpage on the, uh, um, on the internet, and they make this uh, soldering iron, the company's called Isotip, it's a cordless soldering iron, so looking at getting into the field, uh, amateur radio and that stuff, so they wanted to send uh, a unit out to me and let me try it let them know what, what I thought of it so we're gonna you I thought this would be a good place uh, to start on uh, this is a model 7700 it's their entry level model we're uh, we're uh, give it a shot here and see what happens um, it it's uh, it charges up in about four and a half hours. It says here from a dead charge, um, and it came with a couple tips. I put that tip in it. Uh, again, this is the entry level model, and here's the other tip that they uh, sent along with it. So. I thought this might be a good good time to try it out on the older stuff, and then our when I get back to some of my uh, newer printed circuit board uh, projects, I thought I'd try it out on that and let you know how they work. Um, the only complaint about I have about the 
so far on the 7700 is there's no lights telling you when it's charged or anything like that. Um, I've noticed the, the other models are a little bit higher, uh, higher level models do. So that, that would be my only complaint so far, but we'll see how it performs here. Okay, and the knob here, it's got, it's got a lock position. You swing that around to on, and then you press it. And it get, supposedly gets instantly hot. So, uh, since I need two hands to use the desoldering thing and stuff for uh, the desoldering uh, tool, what I'm going to do is we'll see how quick it, this actually heats up and melts this solder. So, here we go. Well, that's pretty good, actually. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set the camera down, and then uh, we'll start to do some desoldering with it. Well, here we are. We have the uh, coil removed. I'd like to say that was a lot of fun, but I don't really like to lie. <laughs> uh, I tried several methods to get it out. Um, Using my standard soldering iron, and I couldn't generate enough heat uh, to melt the solder because of the chassis, obviously. Then I went ahead and tried my little propane or butane torch here. Problem I had with that is, is it'd get the uh, stuff around it too hot. I even tried to insert aluminum foil around it to protect it, and that wasn't enough, so I quit that. What I ended up finally doing that was successful. So I used my little Dremel tool with a couple bits. This is the last bit I used on it. Um, the first bit or tip I used on it was this and I just ran uh, this around the, the, the screw that was down there um, and got enough of the solder off of it that I could finally use my nut driver on it here and I, I could get it on it and I was able to spin the nut or the the uh, screw out of there and then it came loose so what I end up doing be obviously I'm gonna have to clean up all the particles down here and what I what I do before I put this back is I'll go ahead and use the Dremel and clean that up really good so it makes a good solid connection when we get done when we get done, I'll reattach it and I'm not going to solder it back in place. Um, the other S38s I've looked at don't have that. Some some of them did, but most of them don't. So we're going to attempt to do it that way. And then I this got a little the the heat the uh, heat shrink tubing got a little bit warm here, so I'll re remove that and replace that and double check those components, to make sure they're okay. Now on the the whole reason we took this out, here's this wire that wraps wraps around the coil. And it's supposed to go wrap around and go back in this hole right here, comes up and solders this terminal up here. So this is obviously too short. I think that's what's throwing it off. So I'm going to completely remove that wire and put a put a different wire in there. Um, and hope that fixes it and then I'm going to try to figure out how to double check the coil before I put it back in make sure I didn't damage it any it got a little warm when I was desoldering things so I'll try to double check the coil before I put it back in hopefully that fixes the uh, band 4 problem and I didn't create any other problems so that's what I'll start doing next Okay, doing a little forensics on the coil. This is the wire I took out, this, and then there was one inside the coil here. Now, that actually went, it was connected to this terminal here on the outside, wrapped around two times, then went underneath here, and then went up to the band switch selector to the same wire that this was on. 
Now, uh, the wire that went from here was disconnected, went from here over to this lug here on the inside. Um, and if you can see down here, there's a wire that goes from here to that lug that the the wire was connected to. So I think that wire broke off. And what they did is they just connected it to the outside here, wrapped it around two times, went up. And I think that's throwing it off. So I'm going to need to try to desolder this wire. And um, all I have is some stranded wire. I'm going to go ahead and try that. Got some of this gauge black stranded wire. This is all solid cord, but I don't think that'll make as much of a difference as long as it's uh, wrapped correctly. So we're going to try to desolder that, and then I re uh, put put this on, and we'll see what happens. Okay, there's the uh, results of my repair work. Probably can't see down in there, but I think that's better. Um, I'm hoping it's good enough to make it uh, so I can align it or go through and drop some super glue in some places to keep everything in place and or clean everything up and we'll put it back in and see what happens. I went through and cleaned up the area where I ground the solder out. Um, I checked the continuity on the coil. Everything seems to check out okay according to the schematic. Um, and then I also ground off the bottom of the lugs of the coil. So next thing I do is I set the coil back in there and start reconnecting it. Okay, I've got the coil, the oscillator coil back in. Um, I took the opportunity when I did that to cover these bare wires with some heat shrink tubing. I did check that resistor and that mica cap to make sure that they were <clears throat> okay. Uh, after I got, a, got them a little hot with the butane torch and so I've got everything back in I have to say it took about two hours I think uh, I think it hopefully if it works it'll be worth it at least aesthetically I think it looks a lot better than it did before so uh, next we'll go back through and go through the whole alignment procedure we believe we actually finally have mechanical and electronic restoration done on the chassis. Um, band 4 continued to give me problems. Um, I, like I said, I took the coil up, uh, took the coil out and rewound it down in here. It looks better. Thought I had it working okay. And, uh, but then all of a sudden it quit working again. I found a resistor down in here that I'd forgot to replace and it was out of tolerance. I went ahead and re uh, replaced that. Uh, tried all kinds of different things. Finally, I was getting to the point where I was going to take this connector off of the trimmer for band 4. And when I was doing that, I kind of put a little pressure on it and this ground bar here came loose from the solder joint to the terminal here. So I took soldering iron, heated it up, soldered it real good, and Viola, now all of a sudden I could uh, uh, get band 4 to align. So after all that work, um, we finally got it going. Um, so we're going to set this aside and we'll start working on the case next. So that's it for this, uh, this time. Um, until next time, this is KB0ASQ signing out.